Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us on our YouTube channel today at PowerMation. I am David Ellers, Business Development Manager for the Phoenix Contact product line here at PowerMation. And we're ready to get into some cool product today, so I'll take the shades off and we'll take the shades off the product too. Our product today we're going to be discussing is the Caprock product, which is an electronic circuit breaker product by Phoenix Contact. So the Caprock product is a modular product. It uh, gives you overcurrent protection, also gives you over and under voltage protection in the system. And it's got a lot of combinations and options. It's very intuitive, pretty simple design, and has lots of built-in features. So the system itself, pretty easy to use. It consists of a, a base power module that you would start with. Then you have individual channels of circuit breakers that you would come in and apply to the system. There's single channel, two channel, and four channel breakers available. There's a current rail that delivers the current over a backplane to the individual modules. And then there's a potential distributor uh, that you have also in the system. So I'll, I'll go through those individually and just give you a qu quick overview of each one. So the power modules can deliver up to um, 45 amps to the entire system. So I simply bring in my, my power to the top, bring my common in to the, the second tap here, and I powered up my um, my power module itself. There's three different versions available. There's a base version that has no communications. This unit that I'm holding here has Profinet communications built in and actually two ports, so it's a switch inside the system. And there's an IO Link version available as well. And then the power module itself, once you bring the power in, it delivers power to the power rail. And the power rail simply would clip into your DIN rail. So if I Pull this up, clip it on in place, snap it in, and we're ready with our power rail to go. So once the power rail is there, or once you're, you're looking at doing the system, there's a couple different power rails available. So there's the, the base power rails, which would come in two different sizes. There's an eight slot position, which is the one I have here in my hand. And then there's a 20 slot version for larger systems. If you need to go Beyond that, there are some expansion modules which are available, and there's three different sizes of the expansion modules, a 4, 8, and a 20-channel expansion module. And those modules are clipped together um, at the end of the, the base module. There's a slot in here. I simply put in the power clips to transfer the power across that channel, across the backplane, and all that sits in the background, and then you don't see it once it's installed. So the electronic breaker modules simply slide into place alongside any Caprock module that you have. There's grooves on the side. Once it's in the rail, you just slide them together and I can keep adding modules to the system. The uh, modules are available in a fixed current variety in either a one, two, four, six, or eight amp uh, applications. Uh, single fixed current, so I don't have any settings. I put it in, and it is what it is. The ones I have here today that I'm showing off are the adjustable versions. And there's three different versions of the adjustable. There's a single channel, which I'm, I don't have here. Um, but there's a two channel here on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, there's the four channel version. If you notice, there's some slight differences between the two. The four channel version just has um, indicator lights, which are also a push button. And the two channel has rotary switches and that indicator light, which is a push button. And I'll go through those uh, features as we move on. So once you have your power module in place and your breaker modules, Phoenix also has a, a distribution module available or a potential distributor available for your commons. It would simply be another module that would slide in, a little thinner than the ones that we have here, and you can put them in between each breaker or at the end. This gives you the advantage of having the neutrals right next to your power feed out to your device, so you don't require additional terminal blocks on the rail next to your breakers. This kind of assists in simplifying the wiring and just makes the system a little faster to install. So basic operation of the Caprock system is pretty intuitive. There are LED indicators on the front, which give you immediate indication of what's going on with the system. If the LEDs are green, everything's okay and the system's all nice and happy. If the indicators are amber, that means that the load that is currently applied to that breaker channel is at 80% or higher of its rated setting, giving you an indication that you are getting close to having the breaker trip. 
If the indicator is red, it's indicating that there's an error, either wiring or short, or a overcurrent fault that has happened in the system. The other indication possibly could be flashing, and if, the, if it's flashing green, that means the breaker is okay, but it has not been set or locked down into its pre-configured setting. So somebody has changed the setting and hasn't locked it in and said, yes, that's what I want. And we'll take a walk through how that works right now. The uh, units with the rotary switch, and I'll just slide that off, are pretty simple to configure. There's indications right on the front that tell you the number of amperage that you're using. I just simply put the screwdriver in, turn that to the desired amperage. Once it's set, I press and hold the green button, which would be flashing at this time. Once it stops flashing, I release, and now I've set or locked in that breaker to that desired amperage. And I would do that for each circuit on here. If you have your load attached, it's nice and easy to go through and you rotate your switch. And if you're at full load, it will go from yellow to green when you know you've reached the amount of amperage required for the load that's on the system and then I would lock that into place. If you have the four channel breaker that doesn't have the rotary switches, it's a little bit different. So if I want to set the first channel here to let's say three amps, I would press and hold that button until it begins to flash and then the light will flash indicating how many amps the breaker is currently set to. Then I would simply press it sequentially, waiting it for it to flash twice, press it the second time, and now it's flashing three times for my three amp limit. Once it's flashing at the desired limit, then I press and hold again for a couple seconds until it turns solid, and the breaker is set. Pretty simple, pretty easy to go. The advantages of doing communications to the system as opposed to using the base power module without communications is I can set all of the stuff I just did here manually, I can set that with the software. So if I'm on Profinet or IO Link, I have the advantage of doing all sorts of reading data that's available here in the breaker system. I can read the status of any individual breaker if it's on or off. I can see if it's at that 80% warning level. I can also tell if it's in error. The other things you can do is I can see that what the total current for the system is being drawn. Am I approaching that 45 total amps? Or what the current draw is on each individual channel that I've set. So if I have a set channel to three amps and I'm drawing two amps, I know everything's good. And you can monitor that then in your control system and know very easily if you're going to have any problems with a circuit. If, some motor, if you have motors or some other small motors or other small devices, you know as well as I do, if the current starts going up over time, there's something going on in the system that shouldn't be going on. So the data that you can write to using the communication module are things like channel status. I can physically turn the channel on or off across the network. I can set the amperage value, so instead of picking up the controller and going to it and pressing the buttons or turning the knobs, I can write that data down. I can also reset a fault, so if I have a tripped breaker, once I've gone and cleared or verified the trip, I can reset it remotely, and I can lock the amperage values down. This would then disable either the rotary switches or the push button switches to set the amperage values on the breaker. Very handy if once you have it set and locked into place, you know, it won't get changed without permission. All right, so we've taken a quick break in the magic of editing. We're back together and I've assembled my cap rock on my DIN rail and my system is green, powered up and ready to go. You can see I have three channels on currently and I'm communicating to a PLC next. So if you take a look over at the software screen, which is being published by our, our PLC next, you'll see that I have three channels enabled, just like we saw on the front of the cap rock. Two of them are set to four amps, one is set to eight amps. So if I go back to the cap rock and I take my screwdriver, if you remember these were the ones with the switch, I can turn this second breaker, which is set to eight. My indicator light flashes green, telling me that it's no longer set to the same value. I'm gonna press and hold that button. It goes to green here. And now if I look over on the screen, you'll see that my eight amps has now changed to six amps on the screen and I'm good to go. So you'll also notice I can turn these on and off here if I want to, and there's an edit button so I could come in and actually edit and change the value. So if I come in and say, hey, I want this six to be eight amps, I'll come in and hit click 
and it comes back and, well, hey, wait, what's wrong? It's still at six. Well, in order to do remote control with the cap rock on the rotary switches, I need to set it to remote control. So I'll place my screwdriver here in the channel that I want to be able to control remotely. I'm going to set it to the RC indicator there on the cap rock breaker. Press and hold and set that in. And then now if we take a look back at the interface coming from our PLC next on that six amps, I can come in and edit and I can change it. Let's change it to two this time. Set it down, save the value, and now my value on channel two actually says two amps. So the remote control is available. If you set these to remote control, and now I can come in and I can current lock that. And now if I try to change that here on the breaker itself, it won't allow me to change it because I've locked the nominal current in the firmware or in the software in the Caprock system itself. Pretty powerful tool when you have a changing environment, different things you need to do if you're adding something to your machine. Very simple to control, lots of information coming back to your PLC. Get a system, try it out, I know you're gonna love it. Thank you for joining me today on the PowerMation YouTube channel. I appreciate your time. And as a thank you gift, I've left a, a note here below in the description to a link for our quick reference guide on the cap rock. In the quick reference guide, you'll find a QR code that will take you to a 3D interactive modeling tool that Phoenix has on the website. I've also included a link to the brochure for the cap rock. So all the data that we covered today will be in that. There is also a link for an online configuration tool on the Phoenix Contact website, which will allow you to configure your own system to your specification with all the components and then give you a 3D CAD drawing that you can easily import into your application. Thanks again and have a great day.